Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before, and I'm here with something a little bit different today. This is a book review. And this is gonna be less of a review and more of I just wanted to show you guys something cool that you may have missed, maybe not have seen or heard about. So uh, we'll, we'll call this more of a show and tell than a book report. Obviously, if you read the title of the video, you already know what the book is. Uh, this was created by a group of artists from Australia that called themselves Giant Panda King. They published a number of, of books in the past, and this is a second printing of one of their more prominent ones. So let's just get out here. Just want to show you this nice, um, it was obviously shipped and sealed very nice. They've got a wax seal there. Let's just uh, pop that open. Take a look at this beautiful work of art here. The book is An Unauthorized Detailed Account of Gotham. 1919 to 1939. And this is part fictional history book, it's part crime book, and part Batman. So they put this book out a few years ago, and now this is a second printing with, uh, it's been expanded, they've added new material. There's also a series of videos um, inspired by this book. I don't know if if what all that has to do exactly with, with Giant Panda King and uh, I, I've, I've held back from like watching those videos or reading too much about this because I kind of just didn't want to spoil the, the experience of looking over it for myself. And I don't want to show you all, you know, every single page of this, but just to kind of show you, this is very much um, put together like a fictional history book. And this is a book report. I think we need a vocab word. The vocab word of the day is going to be verisimilitude. Verisimilitude is a word that is used, it means like truth or accuracy. It's used in like film and theater um, and uh, other artistic disciplines. And, and an example of ver verisimilitude would be like, say the movie Man of Steel, the, during the big like action sequences on Krypton at the beginning of the movie. You've got an alien world and alien creatures and wild spaceships and crazy actions going on yet they've given the camera moves uh, shake and zooms that make it feel like it has a human camera operator who's kind of struggling to keep up with the action. So you have this wild, fantastical stuff, but that, that little kernel of realism, uh, as if there's actually a human camera operator, that kind of keep, keeps you grounded in some sense of reality. Well... That, that approach has been applied here, not just in the, the way they've, they've designed the characters, but the way they've captured them in photographs. Very obviously used um, high quality, large format film cameras uh, to give this, this authentic grain and, and, and weathering. And it really looks like these are real photos from another time period that have you know, some have aged better than others. And it's not just in the photography uh, and, and the way they've captured it, but the layout of this book as well really, really feels like an old uh, historical book of, you know, about uh, World War I or, or mobsters of the Prohibition era. Pretty, pretty tremendous. So again, I don't, I don't want to, reveal too many of the fun things to discover while flipping through this book. I just want to show you kind of some of the big, big interesting approaches they, ha they have to, to creating this world and fleshing it out and building out something that feels like both Batman and like a document of a bygone era. And here's like a the page of Phantasm. This is one of the newer pages that they've added for this second edition. They've added a lot more characters. And this is just a great example of just like kind of how understated these designs are. They feel like they're from a more quaint time period. You know, they feel like they were really put together by hand. You know, I love the, I love the, the look of this like hammered metal for Deadshot's mask here. The great image of, of Jason Todd Robin here. Again, not over-designed not too sensational, just feels like it was put together in that era between the 20s and 30s. 
And then just to come back to that idea of verisimilitude again, veracity, uh, this act, this little you know kid they've got here to be Dick Grayson, they got the same guy to come back. He just aged a few years, and now he's Nightwing. Just, just incredible, incredible. Again, more non-sensational spreads like this that just you know they do feel like they're from a you know this is a a frozen car in the aftermath of a Mr. Freeze terror attack, you know. They haven't jazzed it up. They've just made it feel like these are these are documents from from a, a bygone era. Uh, again, they they this kid that was they that they cast for Jason Todd. A few years later, they took more photos of him as Red Hood. Just in incredible. Love that strong man Bane. His case of uh, venom formula ingredients over here. And the book even has an epilogue that goes uh, further into the future. Uh, here's a like photo of the Suicide Squad here, Harley, Deathstroke, Captain Boomerang, Deadshot. You know, it's, and it even goes as far as um, Dark Knight Returns here with Carrie Kelly. And I mean, like, just look, look at these like um, mug shots of the mutant gang. You know, any any one of those photos would have taken however much production design, costume design, makeup. Just a tremendous amount of detail. I really, I, I, I'm, I'm jealous of of how much fun these guys had putting this thing together. And the credits in the back, you can see just uh, just how large this production was to put this thing together. Really incredible. Anyway, guys, um, this is the second printing of Gotham, 1919 to 1939. I, I think they still have some of these in stock, but they said they're not going to be printing anymore for quite some time. And they are going to, the plan right now is to do two more books, a Metropolis book and a Themyscira book. So if you're interested, and those books are going to cover different um, time periods, like up to the, like, like the 30s or the 60s. Um, but if you're interested at all in kind of exploring this, I, I'll tell you, it was really expensive, uh, especially with shipping from Australia. But the amount of craftsmanship and love that went into this thing, it just, it feels really special. So I wanted to show it to you guys and, uh, you know, maybe give you a chance to uh, hear about something uh, that you that you hadn't seen advertised or anything like that. And check it out if you're at all interested. All right, guys, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.